Climate change is a term that's been used since before I was born, so why has nothing more been done about it? At school, from a really young age, we're taught all about the effects that we as humans are having on the planet. From the deforestation of vast areas of land that releases locked up carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, to the mass burning of fossil fuels, and the increasing amount of methane that's released into the atmosphere as a direct result of the meat industry. And from a young age, we're taught all about the possible consequences of climate change. So why have we ignored all of the warnings from the scientific community? We've ignored the fact that an increase in temperature could lead to food shortages, the melting of sea ice and ice caps in the polar regions, an increase in the number of freak weather events like drought and wildfires, coral bleaching, rising sea levels, and we're forgetting all of the impacts that that will have on the species that inhabit those areas. So it does beg the question, have we left it too late? I want to explore how climate change is affecting wildlife in the Arctic. The Arctic is warming at twice the rate of the global average, and in the past 30 years alone, the extent of sea ice has declined by 45,000 kilometres squared per year. Now, with so many animals dependent upon the sea ice for travelling, hunting, finding mates and even giving birth, we need to understand what the effects will be on their lifestyle and how it will affect their survival rates. For generations, the polar bear has been a poster species used by scientists and charities to try and raise awareness for the devastating impacts that climate change could have on Arctic wildlife. Polar bears are heavily dependent on sea ice and use it for movement, hunting, breeding and in some cases denning. Their entire life cycle has developed over millions of years for ice living and they're so well adapted to this extreme environment that they're apex predators in the Arctic meaning they're top of the food chain with no natural predators. However, these amazing adaptations mean that polar bears are hugely disadvantaged when it comes to declining sea ice. Polar bears are almost entirely reliant upon sea ice because their main prey item, the ringed seal, is also dependent on it. Scientists have found that ringed seals are the only food source with high enough fat content and calories to keep a polar bear truly healthy. With declining sea ice, polar bears are having to swim long distances to find ice flows they can hunt on. And although they are strong swimmers, there's a limit to how far and how long they can swim for, because it's extremely costly in terms of energy expenditure. Declining sea ice can also increase the distance that polar bears have to travel to meet a mate, and this can reduce reproductive success and therefore lead to declines in overall population size. But the Arctic is inhabited by a plethora of other amazing creatures, including narwhals, walruses, Arctic foxes, whales, and so many more. So how does climate change affect those other species? The climate is critical in determining species distribution. Every animal has evolved to fill a specific niche within their environment. However, as global temperatures increase, there have been numerous noted shifts in species distributions. For example, scientists have documented declines in Arctic fox populations due to the fact that warmer temperatures are allowing the red fox to expand their range north into areas where they otherwise wouldn't have been able to survive. As a result, red foxes and Arctic foxes are now engaging in direct competition for food and other resources. The red fox is much larger than the Arctic fox and there are concerns that Arctic fox populations could really suffer if we don't start to combat climate change. Arctic foxes also have to cope with the decrease in the number of lemmings. This rodent is a really important food source for them along with lots of other predators in the northern latitudes. Now lemmings have to have sufficient snow cover in order to provide insulation and protection from those predators, but the increase in global temperatures means that there's less snow and it means that they're more vulnerable to predators. If those lemming populations drop too much then it will have a knock-on impact on all the predator populations in the Arctic tundra. Climate change also reaches marine life. Narwhals are completely adapted to living amongst thick sea ice and have even evolved without a dorsal fin so they can travel closely under the ice to take refuge from faster predators. However, sea ice is melting earlier and is covering a smaller area, meaning that predators like killer whales have better access to hunting grounds that were previously inaccessible and unfortunately, narwhal features on their menu. Declining sea ice also means that humans have better access to the Arctic. 
industrial activities, shipping, oil drilling and even military experiments emit huge amounts of noise into the underwater world. The bangs from seismic explosions can cause hearing loss, confusion and stress. It can reduce the narwhal's ability to communicate with each other and even lead to mass strandings. And these activities do not only affect narwhals but every single marine animal who rely on sound in their watery world. Although it all seems very doom and gloom, it's important that we're aware of just how much climate change is affecting animals like this. It may be the only way that we spur humans into action. It's undoubtable that the polar regions are some of the most vulnerable areas to the impacts of climate change, and already we're witnessing mass population declines in numerous Arctic species. We have to adjust our attitude to climate change. We need to raise awareness, encourage more people to make small changes to their everyday lives that will ultimately make a big difference. There are so many easy fixes. You could change your energy supplier. You can install a smart energy meter to control how much energy you're using every day. You can install smart boilers. The list goes on and on. You can donate to climate solutions that are fighting the effects of climate change by protecting and restoring forests, campaigning for cleaner energy or investing in scientific funding so that we can research how our activities are impacting animals. You can also boycott banks that invest your money into fossil fuels and use a bank that's more environmentally friendly. It's not too late to fight climate change and reverse some of the impacts that we're having on the earth, but we have to act now. It's important that we understand how powerful our everyday decisions are. If everyone in the world had a meat-free day a week, the reduction that we would see in greenhouse gas emissions is the equivalent to taking 240 million cars off the road every year. The fact is that we as consumers are so much more powerful than we think, and by making small changes to your lifestyle, even like changing your bank and energy supplier, you can start to control what the world will look like in 30 years' time. We share the Earth with an array of incredible and unique species that have evolved over millions of years. Are we really happy to continue our harmful activities and risk destroying numerous ecosystems, potentially causing the extinction of thousands of species? I know that I'm not. Remember, it's not too late, and your actions today could help to prevent some catastrophic changes from taking place. And by making those small changes, you'll be helping to protect the Arctic wilderness and the numerous species that rely upon it for their very survival.